We continue our Black History Month coverage with a look at Lorraine County's Oberlin College and Conservatory and an incredibly rich legacy of trailblazing black musicians and black musical arts. Oberlin College was founded in 1833 and the Oberlin Music Conservatory followed in 1865. Oberlin adopted groundbreaking policies to admit students of color in 1835 and granted undergraduate degrees to women in a co-educational program before any other college in America. For black musicians who wanted to study music, this was a game changer. On the campus of Oberlin College, a world-class organ can be heard beyond the stone walls of the storied Finney Chapel. I extremely feel that I am exuding the breath of God when I play at such a, 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 an instrument of such grandeur and such versatility. Deshaun Lawson, a sophomore, says music is the rhythm of his life. And Oberlin is the high note in his journey thus far, but not just for him. Black musicians specifically have been granted special privileges and access to a high class education that was not offered uh, during a time when blacks were not allowed to uh, perform or even attend uh, the Ivy League, so to say, or any of the other white institutions during that time. That history, a force behind why Deshaun is here today. So there is this common pattern throughout the years that we see these outstanding uh, black musicians are receiving their beginnings at Oberlin. <laughs> Like Robert Nathaniel Deck, the first black double major graduate of Oberlin Conservatory, inspiring him through every note he plays. And of course, Harriet Gibbs Marshall, the first graduate of Oberlin Conservatory of Music. She founded the Washington Conservatory of Music in DC. There's no way that you can talk about um, American music from the 19th century to the present without acknowledging um, the seismic impact of black alumni and black faculty from Oberlin College Conservatory of Music. Professor Courtney Savali Andrews is also a graduate That's from the conservatory. She'd return nearly 15 years later to teach Africana studies and music. She says although they were celebrated here, black music students still face discrimination after graduating. And so this is why they would find um, their footing in going to uh, historically black colleges and universities to establish uh, music programs specifically for the next generations that are coming behind them. Like Lulu Vera Childers, the second graduate of Oberlin's music school, who would start the celebrated music program at Howard University. Those early graduates were the start of a legacy that would influence future generations of musicians and educators, like Dr. Wendell Logan, a professor and prolific composer, and the founding father of Oberlin's jazz department in 1989. How does it feel to know that you studied under such an incredible artist, composer, professor, musician? I have no words. <laughs> um, I have. I have so much reverence for um, the work that he did um, at this institution. It was not easy for him. Um, and we watched him fight for exactly what he really wanted in terms of representing um, black musics um, respectfully um, and intentionally. That representation can still be heard daily. The school's gospel choir, music to my ears, I couldn't help but join in myself. And as impressive, John Bay, West African drumming, one of the only courses of its kind in the country. Black history is all year long. We do a lot of work to make sure that our students know that these are living traditions. And today, so many talented young musicians are following in these storied footsteps. In the chapel, Deshaun is doing just that, creating the most beautiful music with his hands and his feet. And with each note remembering those who paved the way, 
who also told stories through the notes they played. My life's goal has always been to perform, inform, and preserve uh, the traditions that are found in Negro folk music and black classical music. I hope that whatever I do, I am doing something that involves the Negro folk song. Now, in 1844, George B. Vachon became the first black student to earn a bachelor's degree from the college, followed by Mary Jane Patterson in 1862. She was the first black woman to earn a degree from an American college. The history in Oberlin yeah. is so deep. We were there, you know, morning and afternoon. There was still so much to see <laughs> sure. aside from the music school. There is so much history there in general. And uh, we just got a glimpse of it, and it was it was really special. An amazing story, and the folks who left there to start programs in other places, mm -hmm. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. These major, major college university, their music programs. I went to school for music too, and that's it's it's hard. It's hard to do it. It's hard to finish the the major, knowing that these people, these talented musicians who graduated from Oberlin, started these amazing schools. Mm -hmm. I, I just have so much uh, respect for them, and it's, it's really cool stuff. They ha I'm sure they had no idea how they would carry that on mm -hmm. and introduce right. it to other people the way that they did just, you know, by their years there. Yeah, so it was great. You're and so a, right, and, and a Laura Queso, a singing picture. Yeah. Yeah. He was not having it. You know, I jumped in on that choir, and they were like, what is she doing? <laughs> no. I don't believe it. It clearly made the cut so. in the piece, so there we are. Yeah. I don't believe that. Really nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm.